Hi, I'm CB, and in this tutorial we're going to talk about making a digital paper for yourself, a plain solid colored paper that can work well if you have a patterned paper like this one that I have up here and you want something that complements it and you don't have a, a solid color paper in, that matches. So with the paper that you want to match open, choose your eyedropper tool here we're going to go in and sample a color, obviously, to get something that matches. The shortcut for this is the I key on your keyboard if you want it. And I'm just going to click in here, roll around until I find something that I like. There, that's pretty good. Okay, now let's create a new file to start our paper with. That's Control and N for the shortcut if you're using Windows or Command and N on a Mac. I'm going to use the dimensions of 12 by 12 at 300, which is pretty standard for paper. And you will probably choose white or transparent, we, or you could, I suppose, have gone through, flip that to background color and used it. But let's, for the sake of this, let's pretend you weren't paying attention to this and you just chose white, because I'll show you how you can put that color on it anyway. So click OK. I'm using Photoshop Element 6 for Windows for this tutorial, but this will work similarly on Mac versions as well as Photoshop and other versions of Photoshop elements so just letting you know that. So now we have a white file that's the right size but doesn't have the color and the shortcut for that if we wanted to use shortcuts which is what I almost always use on things is Alt plus Backspace if you're using Windows on a Mac it's Option and Delete I believe. So now we have the color on there but it doesn't look at all like paper it just looks like a nice big block of color and I'm going to get out of that eyedropper tool because it's driving me crazy. So we need to put some pattern on this paper, give it a little bit more interest to it. I'm going to use two different patterns and I'm going to use them both through the adjustment layers, the pattern that's in adjustment layers. I can change the scale of them a little bit more easily and even go back and make changes if I wanted to if I have adjustment layers here of these things. So click that little half black, half white circle and choose pattern. Now you'll have to load the artist surfaces set. I have it loaded here already but let's go ahead and show you how to do that. You hit the little down arrow here and then the little right arrow and scroll down until you get to all the pattern choices and artist surfaces is the very first one. The first pattern I want to use on this is this one right here. Call it's You'll have to forgive me if I'm not pronouncing this correctly. I think it's gouache light on watercolor. Click on it and click this to get rid of the pattern choices. Now this doesn't look like very much when it's this small a scale so I'm going to turn the scale up all the way actually I'll use the slider here all the way to a thousand and click on that. And now it looks nice, it looks sort of mottled and, and like parchment perhaps or rag rolled. I'll hit OK. Obviously it's gray, that's not going to work. So the next thing to do is to go into the blend modes. Use this set of blend modes in here that starts at overlay and ends in hard mixes. These are for working with shades of gray, they work well in particular. I'll use overlay in this case. That looks a lot better, but it's still a little bit more more strong it's stronger than I would like. So let's turn the opacity of this down. I found as I've been experimenting for this particular one 40, 45, somewhere in there works good. And I'll just click out of there to get out of the opacity slider. Now I'll say that I've been recording this several times and, and look back at the video and this looks much better believe me in person than what you're probably seeing in this video right now. The capture is not capturing it as nice as it really does look. It, it may look a little bit pixely or blocky. But So we've got the color looking a little bit more interesting but it still needs a pattern to be considered paper. So back into pattern here. back It's in the same set. I'm going to use the very first one that says dark coarse weave. I'll click on it. Again I'm going to increase the scale but not too much because remember we're looking at a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper and even on your screen you're not looking at something that's 12 by 12 inch. So I'm going to hit OK at 125 here. I like 125. I'm going to zoom in to 100% so you can see that you're definitely not looking at something that was quite as tiny as you saw. It's what I, I like to do is go in to 100% and do the rest of the work from there. Next I'm going to change the blend mode again. I'm going to use soft light in this case. If you had a color that you've sampled that's much lighter like white closer to white or, or closer to black, you may need to use one of these other blend modes here such as hard light, vivid light, linear light, experiment with, 
experiment with those until you find what you like because the lighter colors the patterns won't show up as well but soft light will work in this case and it's even still too harsh for my liking my mistake when I was first making papers was I kept my opacity on this layer turned up way too much and it was just too harsh especially when you get it printed out and have it on a layout it doesn't look as nice so I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down quite a bit to about 30 I think in this case until it's very very subtle and click out of there and now when you start zooming out you can see that you can still see it it's not so subtle that it's gone but it's much more like paper and of course once you get zoomed out enough to that you can see the entire thing on both of these you can't really see the pattern at all it may not look so great again on your video screen but it, it is very nice and we have a nice solid paper that complements this pattern paper if you're in elements here you can use the cookie cutter to cut a big chunk of it off in a nice shape and throw it over onto a layout in Photoshop you can crop it with some tools and, and put it on your layout that way, use it as a photo mat or for journaling but now you've got a, a little bit more to work with in your in your kit perhaps that you've downloaded that didn't have a solid and you have your very own paper that you've made, congratulations I'll say that you can flatten this at this point and save it as a JPEG or even save it as a PSD and a JPEG so that you have these layers available to work with and as I say having these as adjustment layers allows you to double click in here and go in and change scale and even the pattern if you want at any time so that's why I enjoy using that method so I hope you found this tutorial informative, uh, informative. <laughs> I'm CB and thanks for watching